Hey guys, and welcome to episode two of The Beetle Diaries. It's the show where we ask a very simple question. Can a 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle keep up with modern day life? Coming up, we have a very special episode because Volkswagen has invited me down to Pikes Peak, which is about two hours south of here, to check out a very unique, very cool, one-of-a-kind Volkswagen. So coming up is what could turn into a classic TFL misadventure. So you might be asking yourself, why, Michael, will this turn into a classic TFL misadventure? Well, there's one very simple answer for that question. It's about 90 degrees outside today in Colorado, and that 1971 Super Beetle is air-cooled. So overheating seems like a very real possibility. But I have to get down there, so I'm going to pack up the car and get on my way. Okay, so there's my stuff. And the Super Beetle has a frunk. So it's kind of a funny process again, because initially it's just kind of locked. So what you gotta do is you gotta come around here. I've already unlocked it. And you gotta hop in here, get to the glove box, and then there's this little handle. And you pull the handle, which unlocks the frunk, and then you come back out, close that, grab the thing, open it up. Plenty of space in there, actually. And then we'll just take my backpack. Put my backpack in there. That's fine, that's good. We'll take that off there. Take the camera gear, put the camera gear in there, and there you go. That's pretty much it. All right, so one other fun thing that I thought we could test is the MPG that this 1971 Super Beetle gets. So, it doesn't have a trip computer because I don't think this thing has any sort of computers in here really. Uh, but what we can do is take note of the mileage now with a full tank. It says 52,805 miles. And then when I go and fill up, I'll just do some math and figure out what kind of MPG I'm getting in this old thing. As you can see, I made it. Car didn't overheat, didn't blow up, nothing bad happened, didn't get in an accident. I made it to Colorado Springs. So, the question is, what is it like to drive a car that was built 47 years ago? To sum up my answer, I'm gonna give you the good, the bad, and the weird of driving a 1971 VW Super Beetle. All right, so the good. Well, for me, the best part is the driving experience. This Beetle, compared to all the modern electronics that we're used to today, feels hyper-connected. Every input you make has an instant response that's really gratifying. Now, it would be obvious to complain about the Beetle being slow, and I'm not going to tell you that it's a fast vehicle, but it certainly didn't have much of an issue keeping up with traffic. I actually got it up to around 80 miles an hour on the freeway, which I don't really recommend, but it's certainly doable if you need to. Alright, so the bad. Well, for me, the worst thing is just the lack of room in the front seat. Right now, the driver's seat is pushed back as far as it'll go, and, well, you can watch me struggle to get in. Yeah, I'm just a little close up front here. All right, so the weird. For me, the weirdest thing on the Super Beetle is the way that you interact with the front trunk, the frunk, and the engine compartment. On most cars, I feel like you go under the dashboard and pull a lever to open the hood. But on this car, you go into the glove box and pull a lever to open the frunk, whereas you use a key to get into the engine compartment.
The only other downside is that the Beetle doesn't have AC, so I did end up getting a little sweaty on this 90 degree day. Uh, so before I head down to dinner, which is in, oh, I don't know, 25 minutes or so here, I'm gonna probably freshen up. And then after dinner, I have to wake up at probably 2.30 in the morning because we're supposed to meet in the lobby at 3 to head up to Pikes Peak to see this really special, one-of-a-kind car that Volkswagen is showing off here at Pikes Peak. I'll see you guys in the morning. About 2.30, I just woke up. I'm supposed to be down in the lobby in like a half an hour to get ready to go up to Pikes Peak and we're gonna watch the very special car do some testing this morning. So, I'll check in with you from the mountain. So it is currently um, like four in the morning-ish, super early. Uh, we've got about an hour and a half until the cars actually start running, but right back there is the car that I'm here to see. It's, if you haven't guessed at this point, the Volkswagen ID-R Pikes Peak fully electric race car that Volkswagen here is testing for the Pikes Peak race in about two weeks. Um, so in a little bit, we're gonna hear a bell, which is our sign that it's time to ascend the mountain and watch some cars do some testing this morning. I'll check back in when the sun has risen and we can actually see some cars running. Oh, there go my headlights. So the idea behind the IDR Pikes Peak race car is that there's a, there's a sort of sweet spot in terms of the amount of battery you can run and the amount of horsepower you can run, but you want to get the car as light as possible. You could have a car with 1500 horsepower, but you'd have an enormous battery, and at that point weight becomes a little bit of the enemy because the lighter the car, the more grip you can generate for a given amount of mass. The old thing in, in, in racing is weight is the enemy. You want to be as light as possible because you generate more grip, you generate better brakes, you get better acceleration, but again, you, you need to have enough battery to generate the horsepower, so the, the whole car is a compromise. The IDR Pikes Peak has a total power output of 500 kilowatts, which translates to about 670 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. Power is sent to all four wheels through two electric motors, one in the front and one in the rear, allowing for active torque distribution. Including the driver, the car weighs 2,425 pounds, allowing for a 0 to 62 time of 2.25 seconds, according to Volkswagen. Of course, this electric racer still needs to be charged up. The process of charging the IDR takes about 30 minutes with the help of this big truck mounted generator, though Volkswagen says 20% of the power needed for the race is made from brake regeneration during the run. I think the best car you can have for Pikes Peak is electric. Why is that? The distance, the power, the altitude and so on is perfect. It's a crazy race. You are, we are coming from Europe, also in the past. We invest a lot of time and so on and so on and so on. But you have only one chance. And you don't have a race in the world that you have only, only one chance. In Pikes Peak, if you have an issue, it's better. You know? That's, that's, a, that's the biggest problem of Pikes Peak, you know?
It was then time to pack up and get on the road back to the TFL headquarters in Boulder, giving me a chance to complete the Beatles MPG test and see what kind of mileage I was getting. All right, so we'll do a simple calculation here. We, we were at 52,805, now we're at 52,968. So 52,968 minus 52,805. 163 miles on a tank, not bad. So let's fill it up and we'll see what kind of mileage we got on that 163 miles. Yeah, that's the guess. Don't forget that there. All right, so the nice thing about this 71 Super Beetle is that you don't have to use the nice gas, so we will take regular unleaded. And start filling her up. Uh, it's not gonna be the most stellar gas mileage ever, but that being said, I was pretty much floored on the highway the entire time to keep up with traffic. <gasps> okay, 7.448 after the first click. We will wait for 30 seconds. Top it off. Okay, that's all she wrote. So let's bust out the calculator once again. So we had 163 miles divided by 7.644 gallons. And the verdict is 21.324. Okay, so 21-ish MPG is obviously not stellar, but that won't change my mind about the Beetle on this road trip. To answer the question we asked at the beginning of the video, can a 1971 Beetle keep up with the modern world? The answer is sure. It won't be fast or fuel efficient, or air conditioned, but it still tackles the open road without breaking a sweat. At least the car won't break a sweat. Be sure to come back to tflcar.com for more episodes of The Beetle Diaries where we're going to continue putting this Beetle through its paces to see if it can run with today's modern cars. For the Fastlane Car, I'm Michael Curtis. See you next time.